friends, Jerry Rosa here on the Rosa Stringworks Workshop. Just putting this little front end on this video that's already out on YouTube. And the reason I'm doing that is because I'm probably getting more comments on this video than any video I've ever posted. It's a good video. I think you're going to enjoy it. But uh, I wanted to head off a few of the questions. I didn't do a good job of explaining what the real problem was in this video. I've seen this problem dozens of times, dozens of times. As a matter of fact, one of the first ones I saw, my buddy owned a Martin D35, and it was a real nice guitar, but he kept complaining about the intonation. Well, I checked it over. He, he, this fellow was in my band. He's the banjo player in my band, Leon. And I checked his guitar over and I said, well, your bridge is in the wrong place. Well, for, for several years, he kind of argued with me. He says, Martin wouldn't make a guitar with the bridge in the wrong place. Well, the bridge was in the wrong place. And finally, after years of struggling with that guitar, he let me move the bridge and it's a boomer and he just loves it now. And, uh, but that's not the guitar in the video. That's just the first one that I encountered like this. And then I learned that that was a pretty common problem. Uh, back in the 70-ish, 80s period, uh, early 80s perhaps, and uh, his was, I believe, from the early 80s, my buddies. But this guitar, I'm not sure when it was from. I think it was probably from the 70s. A lot of folks thought it was the strings causing the problem. Strings wouldn't cause it to be off that much. They can cause some issues with intonation, but nothing like that. And a lot of other folks thought the neck angle was off side to side, and that's not it either. And the, the uh, neck angle this way was fine too. So, you know, it wasn't any of those problems. It's just simply the bridge was in the wrong place. The bridge should have been back about a full eighth of an inch. The problem with moving the bridge back is that it creates an ugly scar in front of the bridge. So instead of that, I made a new bridge, put it in the same place, and just moved the saddle back and the holes back. And it accomplishes the same thing, but it looks better and uh, it plays real good. I think you're gonna see that. And please give me a thumbs up if you like the video. Thank you. Friends, Jerry Rose here in the Rosa Stringworks Workshop, yet again with another little short clip. Here's a Martin guitar that's got an issue. Now, it before I took the bridge off, it definitely had an issue. The intonation sucked on it. I mean, it the intonation on the high E string was fine. The intonation on the low E string was way off. You can see I've got my little rig here where I can float the bridge. I This is an oversized bridge, by the way. This is not the original bridge. Um, the original bridge could be put back on, but it's much smaller. And so I thought I'd try this oversized to see if it would help, but it's not going to help, I can tell. This, right at the moment, is perfect intonation. But you can see how I had to slide the bridge way back to get the intonation right on this. That's probably a quarter of an inch across there, where it's back to normal down here. So, what do you do about that? Well... The answer is, I don't think I know what to do about that. That's a tough one, I can tell you for sure. Here's another way of looking at it. I have this oversized bridge sitting where it belongs now. The holes basically line up and everything. The intonation on the E string is just about where it should be, right over the slot. The intonation on this E string is way sharp if I put it there so I had to move it way back here and you can see how it goes over the hole it's that much off and it it's consistent every time I check it every different way I check it it's that far off now why is this guitar different than other guitars well I've noticed a similar thing on a lot of Martin guitars but not quite as bad as this one this one's about the worst I've seen so Here's my thought. Make a custom bridge, cut a slot in it with this weird angle like this, then put the holes on an angle also so that they don't look quite so weird compared to the bridge. That's the best I can come up with. Otherwise you'd have to make such a huge bridge which just really is not a good idea I don't think. But the intonation just sucks on this unless you do it like this. And 
you know, I can prove it to you here, I think, if we just look at it here. I don't know how well this is going to pick up, but we'll see if we can get it to work. The intonation, the sound on this guitar is not working the best either on the intonation. There you can see it right on the money. And there I'm right on the money on the E, and that's on this big, that's on this big E string. Right on the money there. Pretty much right on the money there too. Although that one there I'm not worried about as much. It's pretty close. But anyway, the point is that it's that far off. So that is unique. You don't run across that every day. And I don't know any other way to fix it than to make a custom bridge with custom holes, custom slot to make it right. Otherwise, it's just going to be wrong. Spent a lot of time off camera. I made this blank which is the same size as the oversized bridge that I was going to try to put on there. I've spent a lot of time getting the intonation exactly right. I also lowered the action here as low as I could get it in this setup, you know, because, you know, you can only do what you can do with this kind of a setup. But I've got it down where the action's about a hundred thousands here on both of these, maybe even a little tight on that, which is pretty good. And with that set as good as I can set it, with everything up to pitch and setting the intonation, this is where I need to mark the bridge. And so I'm going to mark the bridge right here. Now keep in mind the bridge is still floating, but I've got it marked also with pencil marks across the front here, and I can see that. And so, you know, we're going to, what I'm going to do, I guess, first is... I'll probably just go ahead and glue the bridge in place and then once it's glued in place I'll route out this slot and then I'll figure out how to drill. Actually, now that I think about it, this was my plan. I'm going to try to put this hole where it belongs on the bridge just like it is because it should still go, no problem. And so I'm going to try to put it right where it belongs. Try to keep the, you know, the distance about the same, even though it's not going to be the same. That's, it's, you know, it's, it's more here than it is here on this one. And mine's going to be that way too. But I'm going to, you know, try not to, you know, if I put it straight across, it's going to really be bad. So I'm just going to pick an angle there that looks pretty good, and that's going to be where I'm going to drill my holes. And I'm just doing that by eye. I don't think I want to be back any further than about here. About here I think will work pretty good. So I could drill my or draw my line across here and this would be where my holes would go. So now I just need to line up the holes on that line and mark them and then we'll drill them first. This has been a process. You got to think about the order of operations to do it pretty well. And now I can see my line there. I've got them down through the center of my holes. So there's my bridge and there's my holes. And sure, that's not going to match the top. We'll have to patch the holes in the top also and uh, re-drill the holes. But that's the only way we can make this thing work right. I changed the way I did this because... Um, you know, being this is such an angle now, if I just laid this on here at this angle, well then the strings are actually closer together than they would have been. So I don't know if that makes sense to you, but it, it's geometry wise, it wouldn't be right. So I put this back on here straight, put the holes, lined them up, and now I'm going to, I mean this is kind of anal retentive, I have to admit, but it could be a difference and I just want it to be right. I don't want it to be close. So now I'm just making an intersection for each 
pole. Yeah, you, you know, you go to all this work, you sure don't want to screw it up on a step like this. So this way, they'll still be the same spacing that they would have had. But when you change that angle a lot, it changes everything. So, so now we'll drill a hole at each of those intersections. And this hole is already where I want it. But So I'll just kind of make it a, split the difference there on it too. And make sure that they're all the same distance just to make sure. Yeah, that looks good. So now we're in good shape. We can get those holes drilled before we glue this on. Got all the holes drilled in there. Got them a little beveled out there. They look good. I think everything's shaping up really nice on this. I'm just going to... This back is a little bit squared off. I'm going to see if we can't knock a little bit of that off. It doesn't have to be real round, but I thought it would be nice to round it a little bit. I think that's real nice. Yeah, I think that's real nice now. You can't really tell it from a factory bridge other than the shine on that right now. Um, maybe a little more bevel here wouldn't hurt nothing, or a little more rounding off. But uh, it doesn't have to be much more. Okay, um, I think I'm going to go ahead and sand it down. Even though I'm going to lose my mark here, I'm going to have to set the intonation again once I get this glued in place. It won't be perfect until I glue it back in place. This was all just to make the bridge so that I could make one that would make sense. Otherwise, it could look really horrible if you just went ahead and tried to make it all and, and without checking the intonation and everything. So, we're going to sand this up and get her glued on. Okay, we got our sanded nice and smooth there. Um, could do a little more sanding maybe. But I also scraped the bottom with the tooth blade uh, so that it would be a little bit toothy there. So it got a little bit of grip there for the uh, glue to hold on to now. We'll just do a little bit more hand sanding because I can see some sanding marks in there from the thickness sander. But they're not bad. I don't see any more marks now. I think we're ready to glue her on there and then cut the slot. That's, that looks like a real nice, you know, factory type bridge other than the fact that the, the holes are at a little steeper angle, you know, but that can't be helped because of the way that this guitar plays. Now I've got the bridge back where I believe it goes. The trick is holding it there while I trace around it. Okay, once I get that bridge right where I want it there, sometimes, especially one like this one that just keeps moving on me, because this one's slick for some reason, I'm just going to go ahead and put a clamp on it, because it's just going to keep moving, I think. I don't think it's going to cooperate. I have a brand new X-Acto blade in here. And you have to be very careful doing this because you can just rip out a big area and cut across the finish, which would really be bad. I just, I just want to cut through the finish into the top just slightly. When you get to the end here, you really have to change your stroke up so that you don't cut past the end. I'm trying not to cut into the wood too much. I'm just trying to cut the finish. But, you know, you can't help but cut the wood a little bit sometimes. So I think we're good. Now we just clean that up inside of that very fine line and glue her in place. This step is probably not 100% necessary, but I'm going to go ahead and fill all these holes just to more or less say I did it and uh, I'm, I'm just checking inside there I'm getting that down to the proper depth and then I'm making sure that the saw is not touching the top of the guitar here by the way I'm torquing it
think we're in very good shape. This, I've already tested the fit on this and it fits like a glove. It doesn't move at all now. You can move the whole guitar because it's down inside that finish. So it's locked in. We're going to go ahead and glue that in place. We got all the glue spread and on both surfaces and I can put it in there and feel that it locks into place so I know it's right and it's not going anywhere. I'm going to clean up that extra glue squeeze out and then we'll clamp her up. I put a bridge call underneath there too just for clamping. Uh, just a, a large thing that's pretty much in the shape of the bracing in there. It's about a half inch thick and that way the, the clamps all clamp down real good and straight. I don't always do that. It depends on the instrument. This one really needed it because the X bracing was really close to where I was clamping. So anyway, it uh, is about as good as it can be done. We'll just have to wait and see how we can uh, cut that saddle slot in there and set the intonation. The bridge uh, isn't completely cured, but it's been sitting about four hours, so I went ahead and took the uh, clamps off so that I could start working on this intonation and uh, get the slot cut. Um, I've got it checked here and tested, and it seems to be pretty good right where it's at. It doesn't look like it's quite as slanted to me now as it did before, for whatever reason, and I don't know why. Looks right on the money right there. I'm going to double check it one more time. right on the money so I'm gonna go with that and uh, mark it there We've got the action down pretty low here so it's not perfectly low yet but that's so the intonation ought to be pretty close right where it's at I'm marking it behind and in front both and then I'll uh, just use a straight edge to draw the lines and we'll route in between there. I've got those lines penciled in there. I think you can see them. And I also put a stop on each side. I got this stop by just running it right down the edge of the fretboard. And uh, that looks like it's pretty symmetrical, so we're going to go with that. Now we're going to rig it up to route that out. Well, friends, we got this Martin guitar all put back together in very, very good shape. The fretboard almost looks brand new. The action's very good. It's about 90 right here, 90 thousandths. Uh, we had to cut the br new bridge down in height to get the action good. Uh, we've got the deer antler saddle. We've got that large compensation across there that uh, with, this, with the uh, pegs in an angle, it doesn't look that bad now, see? where if I had left those pegs close to the holes, it really wouldn't have looked very good. So it turned out real good. Um, it's just got a great sound. The, the amazing thing is the intonation on this is so perfect that the tuner, the needle just doesn't even move. It just goes to the center and stay, stays right there. So it's really good. <laughs> got a nice sound. I can't play a guitar all that well, so I just kind of peck around on it. 
But uh, I think that uh, turned out better than I even expected. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. <laughs>